This video is how you add vectors together and maybe why 3 add 4 isn't always equal to 7. Now if we have a, an Iron Man figure perhaps there might be a certain uh, number of forces acting on them. There might be uh, the weight acting downwards, Okay, so there might be a weight acting downwards of 1000 newtons. But uh, Iron Man is providing some kind of force uh, and this acts at an angle of 30 degrees from the vertical and maybe has a force of 1,500 newtons. And what we want to do is maybe find the result of this force and this force on Iron Man. And if we do that, we know then maybe which direction they're going to move in. We represent a vector with an arrow that is proportional to the length uh, and in the right direction. So we can see here that maybe the black arrow is bigger than the blue arrow and it's actually in a different direction. Now, by adding them together, effectively what we can do is we can just sort of take them and move them around. So there might be this uh, 1,000 newtons acting down, and if we add that end to end to the upwards newton, I've probably drawn it at the wrong angle there, we can then work out the result of these two forces on the object. And effectively, it's from the start to the very end. And what we have here is the result of those two there. So the resultant of two vectors is a single vector that produces the same effect. There are really two ways that we can solve uh, vectors. We can do it by using uh, mathematics, or we can do it by using scale drawing. Now, in terms of the mathematics, uh, a lot of this you'll be doing anyway, and it's only GCSE knowledge. For example, if we had a vector that was acting vertically, uh, and maybe a vector acting horizontally, uh, we know that there's going to be an angle there of 90 degrees between the two. And if we wanted to work out the result of this vector and this vector, we could draw in that arrow there. Now to find the distance here, I'm going to call this resultant vector R, and perhaps we have a distance, a vector x up and y across, so this could be maybe velocity, it could be the force on an object. To find out the resultant R, we can use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras says that um, x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to r squared. So r is just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. However, a vector also must have some kind of direction, theta. And we can do this using Sokotoa. Okay, so we can find maybe the hypotenuse. Uh, we maybe know the side of the adjacent or the opposite. And if we know the adjacent and the opposite or the hypotenuse, we can work out theta. So this is using Sokotoa. And for example, perhaps we knew the opposite and the adjacent side. We might know that tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. If we know these values, we can put them in and find our value for the direction as well. So this gives us the two things that we need for our vector quantity. So magnitude and also the direction. The other way that we can solve this vector addition, and this is sometimes very handy if you have three or four vectors perhaps all added together, is by doing scale drawing. Now there are certain things that you must have for this. First of all, you do need a ruler. Okay, you can't get away from it. Secondly, this is what most people forget, is some kind of protractor. And thirdly, you do need a pencil. Now I'm going to use a pen just to make it a bit clearer. But you should draw all of your diagrams in pencil, so if you make a mistake you can always uh, correct it if necessary. Now in that first example, uh, we said that we had a force of 10,000 newtons, so 1,000 newtons acting downwards. And I'm going to choose a scale to make it a bit easier. So I'm going to say that uh, maybe 1 or 10 millimetres is equal to 100 newtons, or 1 millimetre is 10 newtons. So if I've got a force of 1,000 newtons, that's going to be 100 millimetres down. So I'm just going to draw the line in using the ruler. And this was the weight force. Now, in the original example, uh, perhaps we had an angle of 30 degrees and there was a force of 1500 newtons. So this means, uh, using the protractor, I'm going to measure out my angle of uh, 30 degrees. 
and I'm gonna draw in a line that should be 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters long. So what we have here is the weight acting down and maybe the thrust provided by Iron Man. Now the result of these two vectors is effectively the single vector that would make um, have the same effect as these two. And I'm going to draw that in uh, from here up to here. Now the good thing about this is it's fairly quick. But what we can do now is we can measure the size of this here and that will give us our resultant. We can also measure an angle, and I'm gonna say the angle uh, from upright. So if I measure this, we get a value of 80 millimeters. 80 millimeters, well if 10 millimeters is 100, then 80 millimeters is gonna be equal to 800 newtons. So I've got here the magnitude of that vector. I can then just use my protractor, and I can measure the angle is about 70 degrees. So the angle theta is equal to 70 degrees. So what I can say here is that the resultant of uh, the forces on Iron Man are equal to a force of 800 newtons at 70 degrees. And if we know maybe perhaps the mass of Iron Man, which I guess we could work out if we know his, his weight is a thousand, we can maybe work out his acceleration and the result that he accelerates in and the distance that he accelerates in. So that's pretty much it. Scale drawing, protractor, ruler and a pencil.